record on it. And so it's going to be really interesting. I, I got to wonder, though, how much Sonic's new analyst, Joe Bro, is going to contribute to their ability to anticipate and play this map. I got to imagine Nomad going to be one of the first two bands here, though. If you look at the way that Tempo Storm usually bans, yeah, Nomad by far and away the most banned operator from TS, and then Sonics, it's usually a Thatcher. Hibana goes off of the board for the Sonics. We usually see Hibana bans on maps like Bank, wow. maybe a, a map like Clubhouse. A Buck ban is also very unusual because, well, Buck is one of the more banned operators from the Sonics, not Tempo Storm by any stretch. They're really changing up. I mean, the fact that Nomad's going to be playable will make it interesting. Maestro going out, that's not as much a huge surprise. I got to imagine, though, you, you're going to go with Mira next, but at the same time, that leaves Echo available. That's going to be tricky to deal with for uh, going for those plants last second, which we definitely see when the armory wall becomes difficult to take. So that is going to be a factor here. Both the Nomad and the Echo still available. Going to probably be abused by most teams, I would anticipate, but they obviously have the ability to uh, try and go off the, the few VODs that they had to look for those weaknesses in these teams, but this was Tempo Storm's pick. The one time they played it in USN, they lost. That was one of their uh, first three failures to make it here to qualify, so an interesting choice all around from them. We'll see them go, of course, to Armory Locker's archives first. No surprise there. Very few teams even bother with starting vents anymore. Still pretty much the, the meta to be playing here. Mozzie, though, and Mute combo. Going to be very difficult for them to try and identify what those yokais are early without an IQ. And so they bring that, of course, to spot those early. One thing that I want to just uh, touch back on was the Maestro ban that was put forward by Tempo Storm. I think that's a, a strategic move to try and eliminate Goddess from the picture on defense. Because now it's going to push her into a role that she may be less comfortable with. A lot of times we're used to seeing her quarterback the defense in 1vx situations with a maestro. She's got pretty good statistics when you look at her in a 1vx, you know, proposition. So, maestro being one of the best operators equipped to deal with that. Well, either way, you're still on a camera, right? right? That's true. That's yeah. that's absolutely correct. And I mean, Echo's going to play very differently. You know, Redeemer for a long period of time was seen as one of the best Echoes, and then Maestro comes out, and I think his Echo play dropped off, and he became much more proficient on Maestro. I don't think there's as much role overlap. I think he's a very good example of that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm interested to see, but we've still got a ways to go. You know, it's... Goddess starting on Echo. Okay, so there you go. That's what we said. I like the tease of the castle, though, because they tease that they could be going vents first, then bring out the Valkyrie just to sneak out those cams. Now, I don't think those cams are going to stay hit for long. You're going to have the IQ in play. A smart IQ player is going to look for the sneaky cams, as well as the drones might have potentially spotted that sixth pick switch. But I still, I appreciate those little subtle things that they take advantage of that the game provides. Though the early drones going to be coming out here to try and identify as much as possible. That's where the Mute Mozzie is going to be doing a lot of denial. You see some of the jamming right now. I feel like we don't see a lot of the Mute Mozzie combo on border, though. It's more wow. reserved for maps that are usually relying on dropping from hatches, narrow doorways, etc. If Oregon was in that pool, I think that that would be a great map for them. Yeah. Cafe tends to be the most prolific that we see. We do see it from time to time on bank as well, even though it can be a larger map as well. So border will be interesting to watch how it unfolds. The big thing for me in this matchup is going to be how have Sonics done now they had more time to get Gonfi and Slevin at high level play? Yeah. Because they had issues getting visas, they had issues actually competing. I think that the Sonics team with both of those players in the roster is much improved from the iteration that qualified for this event. The only question is going to be, does it materialize? Because they're up against a very hungry team that has only been proving people wrong over the last couple months. Absolutely. This is going to come down to how much both these teams scrim, boot camp, prepared for this. You know, this is some land experience here for Tempo Storm, whereas uh, most of the Sonics already have quite a bit of that land experience. So definitely play into that here as they start to creep into the offices make their way towards site. Looks like they could be going for an archives push, potentially, or just pinching this, depending on how they want to play it. Well, the man to watch that was talked about on the analyst desk so many times is going to be Neptunes, and Filthy takes out Goddess. Neptunes on the run, he swings on Dream. So they'll trade one out a piece, but down goes your anchor on Sonics as Goddess is removed from the equation. She's still gonna have those two Yokai drones up, or at least if you're a fan of Sonics, hopefully she will. Another trade from both teams. As down goes Neptunes and Creator, spelled by a C4, put us at a 3v3. A minute ago, plenty of time to work with, but Tempo Storm are very close to being able to approach the site, and down goes Super as well. So it's full control for Tempo. They'll try to swing on in through Fountain, and Gomfi will capture Filthy, catching him looking. Butters twisting and turning inside of Archives. He loses his heads up fight to Slebin, and Crazy, the man that Veli was hyping up so much, is in a 1v2. 
Very low HP for both Comfy and Slebin. Definitely winnable for an IQ at full HP. 30 seconds to go and miles away from the Diffuser. This will be tough. Trying to provoke a fight with Slebin. He sees one, takes him down, gets swung on from the other side. Crazy knows he's playing behind the bomb chassis and Crazy will win at the clutch. Beautiful play and vindication for Veli. Not just a pretty face. First round's gonna go to Tempo Storm. And Crazy is the one on the team that has the Pro League experience, and we see that paying off right there. Staying calm and cool in a, in a very difficult clutch situation. Like you said, low health for the two defenders, but he's in a situation where he's got no intel to work with. I mean, that was definitely a difficult round for Tempo Storm to clutch, especially because of losing the Thermite early like they did. But some great entry, managing to get two picks relatively early. That was definitely the play. The, the problem I saw, though, from Tempo Storm was lack of droning to be able to identify where some of the weaknesses were on that attack. Getting that C4 kill, for example, from Super, that shouldn't have been allowed to happen. And that really put a lot of pressure on players like Crazy and Filthy to be able to try and clean that up. But I think also Sonic's overexposing themselves in a couple of those plays kind of threw some heads their way. And uh, that was really Sonic's round to lose. See, it looks very easy at first blush to be able to take <laughs> control of Fountain, but the way that it had been set up from the Sonics with the rotate towards 90, and then possibly having somebody play at top of metal, somebody in monitors, etc., it makes it challenging for you to swing into Fountain without worrying about further retribution, yeah. be it from the actual bomb site itself that's right next to you, be it from the rotate hole. And there was excellent drone denial that was going on. We touched on the mute and mozzie combo, which comes up quite often. You might hear it said and uttered a number of times over the next, you know, three matches after this one, and including this one, at least for the remainder of the defense of the Sonics, as for the second round in a row, they're running that mute and mozzie combo. Same side as well. So you're starred for information if you're Tempo Storm, and taking control of Fountain is so important because once you do that, you basically can begin to push it towards archives. Now, Goddess went down early, and I don't know exactly if she peaked unnecessarily. We didn't see it from our exact perspective, but it was bad timing. And Sonic's could have still relayed on that information, be it the drones that were captured by Mozzie, the Valk cams or the Yokai cams, uh, which didn't allow Tempo Storm to just bull rush in the way they wanted to, because they knew that they were at a disadvantage. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's definitely, uh, they're going to know the setup a bit more this round, and I think that will play. The, you did see at least them go for the grenade bounce around the corner on Fountain, but the, their lack of knowledge about the rotate out into the hallway to top of metal, that was something they definitely should be able to exploit this round. If they take CCTV, they should be able to play into that a little bit better, and they look like they could actually be going for an armory wall side attack this time, assuming that creator doesn't get picked up early, being the only hard breacher as Havana was banned, and they're not going to run Maverick for that, so it is a lot on him. And of course, he is also a diffuse carrier, typical to see you know, the, the thermite doing that. He's going to get one exothermic charge off here. That's going from the CCTV to that rotate we were just talking about. And then one on the wall here, doing a good job. Thatcher, of course, assisting with that. But Temple Storm off to a good start in the first minute and a half. Creators has used both of his exothermic charges to open everything up against the Sonics. And one of the things that was working so well for the Sonics, which was this not so unconventional uh, setup on defense, is now taken away from them. But hey, you've got full sight control, and you're gonna need a retake from the Sonics. They lose two bodies, Slevin fights back, another gets downed as Filthy is dropped to the ground. So it's a glorified 3v3. You'll have to get Dream to do some covering work. He'll get one, snaps on the Neptune's crazy, finds Slevin, and Comfy down below takes one out on his own. But it's almost a hopeless situation. Too many targets. He's got the MPX in hands, he finds one, looks for the second. Can Comfy pull this one off? He's got three on the board, just needs one more, but no! The clock strikes midnight on his beautiful retake, and it's another for Tempo Storm. Two in a row after a swift entry into the site. That was just the model of efficiency. Creator's getting his two walls open. As soon as he did, that was just unleash the dogs at that point, storming on into the lockers the way they did, just taking advantage. It seemed like Sonics weren't prepared for that soon of an attack. They were almost expecting, okay, now they've got the walls open, they're going to drone, they're going to work on their positioning, they're going to try and figure out where we are and make their plays later in the round. The fact that they just went in swinging, also the pick through the soft wall into the archives, plays like that from Dream, just covering his teammate, that was... I mean, Sonics couldn't really fight that at all. They did not seem to have their aim down yet. They weren't prepared for such a swift attack. And if Tempo Storm, aptly named as a team after that round, could keep yeah. that up, Sonics are going to have to really start to maybe play a little more aggressive, play for some more surprise. Three big kills for Gonfi, give him some stat padding, but ultimately low impact as they didn't do much to sway or change the outcome of the round. A tough position for him to be in, because you know what the Valkyrie playing downstairs. What's your sole goal? 
Plant Denial. Yeah. You got a C4 in hand, you're gonna be playing down below. You rely on the four teammates that you have up top. For crying out loud, you got a Mute up there, you've got two Yokai's up there, you've likely got a Valkam up there somewhere. Three C4s at minimum, because you've got the Mute, the Mozzie, and the Valkyrie. That is correct. So, if you're Gomphy, that is a total collapse of the rest of your team. The system that the Sonics were running on that particular defense crumbled. And that's when Gomphy gets recalled to the site because his role is not to retake. He's yeah. the plant denial while he relies on the rest of his team to halt the push as it happens. I don't know if it was miscommunication on the Sonic's end or if they simply conceded Armory and said, we'll fight back, we'll put the C4s down below, and then we'll just fight from inside archives. It didn't work out either way. I don't know what the particular reasoning was behind it, but it was a valiant effort from Gomphy, just a little too short. So now, what do we see? Well, it's a workshop ventilations defense, but you've got some presence inside of Customs here, and it's going to be all on the shoulders of Neptunes to do the information, gathering, and then relay it. Yeah, and it's definitely going to be a bit different this round because they don't have the Valkyrie cams. They don't have the Mozzie to do the extra drone denial. They're going to be counting a lot on Neptunes playing that pulse to call things up. But they also have the goo mines of the uh, Legion. Gonfi there with a nice open. That's going to take down the Zofia early, a very utility heavy operator they might need later in this round. But hey, Neptune's finding that C4. Now that, of course, is the pulse without the C4 and probably just one left on Super, but that's the one that counts there. Now down to a 2v4 Sonics. Definitely reversing things on a much better site for them here. Good castle on that door as well, denying their entry and forcing Sledge to open things up. Now they're ready for him to storm on in through that metal detector. And you also have the uh, Thermite left as well. We'll open up anything that may need to. A little trouble with the rotate hole. And a lot of damage to Dream, but just not enough to finish him off. He also still has two grenades in pocket. He shrugs off that C4, and I don't think Tempo Storm was expecting to deal with this kind of hole. Narrowly taking the exothermic charge down with an impact, and then Creator's not able to follow up. Almost saw the feet there for a second. Frag grenade's getting primed and ready, and it'll go down. Oh. You get to see it firsthand. Goddess was a dead woman walking on that one. Still, a minute to go for Tempo Storm. They'll trail the Sonics. You see a 4v2 that still sets up favoring the defenders right now. Tempo Storm have had some difficulties being able to crack this defense, and it's not exactly the most conventional workshop ventilation defense that we've seen, of course, with heavy investment over in jail and then as well in customs. Gomphy was able to repel the push that was going onto the armory wall. And he stayed there, he drew in two, took Butters down, and then the C4 baited out the other aggressor from Tempo Storm. Gomphy's flying under the radar right now. And he could capitalize off of the fact that neither creators nor Dream are aware that the Jaeger is lurking above. Oh. But they're slebbing to take down Dream. Gomphy's still from above. If needed, he can take out creators who will snap onto Neptunes. He doesn't have a ton of time left, and this almost assuredly should be a Sonics round, and it will be just like that. Coffee from above goes unseen, and the sight unseen will get the final kill. Now, of course, that means they can't play that sight again. Obviously, that was by far their best defense. The uh, question is, though, where will they go? Will they just go right back to Armory Locker's archives, try that again with some adjustments after a successful round? It looks like that's where they might be going. I mean, give it another shot at this point. Playing down below, as you mentioned, that didn't work out as well for them that previous round. But maybe if they played a little bit smarter this time, they could make it work. They're going with the same lineup they did before, assuming no sixth picks here, as well as Tempo Storm playing the same role they're going to do as well. Now, Tempo Storm's most successful attack by far... Oh, there we go, six pick the dock. That could be interesting for some peaks even. Uh, but their most successful attack was definitely the Armory Lockers push. So you, if you're Sonics, you're going to be anticipating that again, even though the first round is where they attempted to push from the offensive side. So Tempo Storm could go either way with it. They could play off of what worked very well, knowing that Sonics are going to be better prepared for that, or try and switch things up, make adjustments of their own for that offensive push. But either way, I mean, this is off to a good start. Tempo Storm showing that they can win rounds, but also Sonics as well showing they can adapt. Yeah, I didn't really see all that much from the Sonics on either of their defenses that gave me a ton of hope, barring the miracle play that we saw from Gomphy. And obviously, that's not really a strategy that you can set yourself up for. No. Gomphy being an extremely talented player, coming up and killing three members of Tempo Storm, all of whom are isolated to a certain extent, with no real refrag potential, isn't exactly confidence-inspiring, in my opinion, when it comes to a system. It's confidence-inspiring, the fact that it's great that Gomphy can do that. I'm going to call it confidence. Go Ooh, that's a good one. He does have the confidence. But in this case, Tempo Storms, both attacks on this site came from separate angles, right? One was an archives fountain take, and the other was a straight armory wall execute. 
I would imagine that we're probably going to see a return to the archive side, and that's exactly where Tempo's lined up right now, so that makes an awful lot of sense. Take control of that, see if there's anything exploitable inside a fountain, and then move on from there. The Doc pick that you referenced for just a period of time was uh, worth mentioning because Doc's right now, along with Rook's, even though Rook isn't really seen all that often, the, that aggressive MP5 ACOG deal is just a fragging roll, which you wouldn't expect on a bulky three armor, but with how hot Gomphy has been playing recently, the sustain that you get from the Stim Pistols, combined with a pretty decent gun and an ACOG, will go quite far. Well, I, I like that they adapted by uh, to actually holding CCTV this time with that dock. And so that's going to force uh, Temple Storm to come around from the back again. And they know about this rotate hole, so they don't fall for it. This time, Dream managing to pick up Gomphy. That's going to start to free up CCTV a little bit. Now he has control of Fountain, but he has to watch his flanks. He's going to need a teammate to come in here and guard this. You, you see the, the Thermite off to work with Dream. Finding a second one, Neptune's though, a refrag. But that's only one, and it's now 2v4. Temple Storm looking strong again. And three kills from Dream, was that, that I saw? Shoosh. An impressive entry as Neptunes will creep on up as quietly as he can. Survey the wall inside of offices. He knows it's open. Oh, he fights two! They have no idea he's there. That's three for Neptunes. Down goes Dream. Filthy falls as well. Crazy will twist and turn, trying to find the Jaeger, who's been downed. But Goddess shuts Crazy down, and it's a 1v1. Creators versus Goddess. The two support players left. There is a Yokai in play, still watching him very intently, and Goddess will swing out. This is a tough shot to make. She chips away at some of his HP. Heavily disoriented, he'll throw out his flashbangs, trying to burn the ADS. Goddess turns away. Can't see anything, but she loses the fight on what should have been a surefire headshot. And another gunfight, another 1v1 for three of the four rounds will determine a victory for Tempo Storm. That was a tough call whether or not to go for the plant or the gunfight because he easily could have lost that. Echo is very formidable at a distance like he was fighting right there, but Thermite's gun is, is often underrated as well. The ability to win that gunfight against a high armor player though, that was the tricky part. He needed to hit those headshots. You saw how many shots he landed that just weren't killing blows across the lockers because of the high armor and he's at a 2-2 himself. So it's, it's a tough fight to win. That was a a risky call, easily could have lost that round, as opposed to just planting and hoping to bait it out. But as you said, there was the yokai in the room. I think he read into that, knew that the fact that he wasn't being pushed probably meant there was a yokai in play. So just a really good call. And I mean, exactly. really could have gone either way, but the fact that that went down to 1v1, a bit of misplay by Tempo. Neptune's really bringing that round back and almost making it possible. This was Tempo Storm's map pick though, and we're starting to see why. I mean, they've obviously come prepared. And one thing that I was going to touch on, as there's a fact on your screen here. It's Ooh. smaller and harder to read, actually. Than That's good. The Sonics have struggled to hold Porter's main bombsite, winning only three out of 11 rounds. Oh. Wow. That's bad. So their record continues to be it's not. Honest. I'm not much of a bombsiteologist, but that's not very good. No, no, definitely uh, not good. One of those one of those facts that reinforces what we're already seeing, which is yeah. maybe they need a good third site, like uh, you know, customs, so they don't get stuck repeating this over and over. Because Vents they did fine, but they can't repeat that this round or the previous round. They need a good third. I just feel like Border is one of the few maps where your first two sites are quite strong and your third and fourth options are not great. You know, there aren't many of those maps left in the map pool, and I think that's been a a compliment that you can pay towards the uh, the dev team, actually, with the way that they've been changing a lot of these maps around. They've been it's removing been helping it. a lot. Oregon was another one of those maps where it had two good sites, and that was about it. Yeah. And now it's been removed and got replaced by Cafe, which I think you can argue has three good sites, Clubhouse 3 as well. So, Tempo Storm oh, oh, oh. will meet start. their demise. That's a double kill. Well, Doc, fortunately down, couldn't get himself back up there. It's ironic the two operators that can stand themselves back up fighting, but the fact that they're actually taking control of CCTV this time is good because they realized Sonics wanted to play that last time, so they're actually fighting it, switching up back and forth between wall attacks and office attacks, back and forth for Tempo Storm, showing they can succeed with both. They have to get Neptunes out of here. You saw how much of a problem was last time. A Jaeger inside CCTV, always difficult, but there we go, a nice play from below by Butters. Gonna continue to soft up the site, but the fact that they've lost to including their hard breacher is gonna force Filthy to push on in right into some bullets. Nice down for Super and a kill there as well. Not looking good for Butters to finish this off. He's got a little bit of stun utility, but that's it. I'm not sure what the call exactly was there from Tempo Storm. If they thought that Armory was clear or not, it was the wrong call regardless. They rush right in into the waiting arms of Super with a uh, SMG 11. Sputters now in a 1v3. 
Still half the round to go. It's been a very quick pace for both of these teams. And you'll see it on attack. The Sonics are known, at least in scrims from what we've heard, to be quite quick to the punch when it comes to their attacks. So Butters will have to do all this work himself. He's got both of the kills already for Tempo Storm. So an ace clutch, that's just another day at the office for most people, right? Encounters the camera at 90, waiting for somebody to push him. Those deployable shields act as mini mirror windows, and he knows that there's somebody behind it because he can see through the slats. Just trying to draw them out as best as he can. He has the stun utility, but it soars overhead and he's going to lose the fight. That's an almost unwinnable situation. It actually looks like he might have gotten a trade. He did, a trade on land. But there were still two members of the Sonics left, so they will at least answer back. Still a 3-2 lead for Tempo Storm, but with that, the very final defense for the Sonics will go downstairs to workshop ventilation. It was the only site up until that round that they had yeah. been successful on. Absolutely. And the thing is, though, now that they've shown their defense on it quite a bit, Tempo Storm can adjust for that, so you might not see a repeat of that. Given the, uh, how long it took them to win archives, though, it's just they were able to slowly make those adaptations, being able to hold, for example, CCTV, get some picks from there, and push that back. But it's, again, it's the, the Thermite dying early seems to be the, the problem on the rounds that they really struggle on. Attackers they really need to, to make sure that Creators doesn't off. get that picked off. He needs to be playing in safer spots. He needs to let the other players take those entries, people like Filthy, Butters, Dreams, even maybe Crazy, just start to push in and actually clear out areas before he comes up. And I think they'll have a much better round. Now this is a different site where you use the Thermite a little bit differently. It's not as important on attacking the site unless you want to come in through bathrooms because you still can go into the B site without having to use any kind of breach. But at the same time, still, don't let him die early. He's the defuse carrier as well. You don't want to have to rotate back around to pick that up or even drop it in a possibly compromising situation. So this is a, a Tempo Storm needing to adjust, figure things out a little bit. They have the sledge for the castle. They can deal with that as needed a little bit earlier this time. They need to clear out that upstairs and fight from above. Now, the buck was banned, but they still have the sledge to make those plays. So this is totally doable for Tempo Storm here. Again, they just need to make those adjustments, need to be prepared. I think they could do it, but like you said, this is the other bomb site that Sonic's been successful on, and they're going to be going off a little bit of momentum off that last round win. So we'll see how fast they can take this here. Tempo Storm probably slow down a little bit. It's the same setup from the Sonics, right, on their defense. Yeah. So they're going to be running the same operators, but this time around, Tempo is going to know how to take care of it, or at least have a better grasp of what to do with it. Because just saying, oh, they're going to take care of it, I think is a <laughs> simplifying exactly what's going to happen. So. Tempo know that they need to wrestle control of the second floor first and foremost, as everybody does when you attack on border. It's a map that plays out very similarly no matter really which site you're going on, unless it's going to be that bathroom teller site down below, and then, well, getting control of office upstairs is usually a little bit trickier because that's one of the last steps before you push on in. Yeah, I, it's very essential, though. You, you need vertical control to be able to push this properly. Neptune's trying to play against that here with the uh, Pulse. He was fairly successful with it previously when he made that C4 kill the last time they played down here. He doesn't want to burn it too early, but he's going to get drone. Filthy's going to know he's playing there. He's going to try to play against it with the grenade. They're trying to push this here, but unfortunately, nothing really going on just yet. And leaving the wall soft, actually, so we can sledge through it. They must have marked it for a reason, because they scared off Neptune's playing in that position. This is a very tough spot for Dream as bullets will whiz over his head. He knows that he has the safety and security of a wall that cannot be shot through, so... Barring an explosive, he'll be in okay shape for the time being. Exothermic charge going off, pretty standard, and then Dream and Butters will be there to greet anybody who pushes out from the Sonics. Butters will get the kill, starting things off, and the opening frag will come with about a minute left on the board. Will this fall in favor of the Sonics? You got your punch hole laying prone with Neptune, watching very intently for somebody to aggress, but for the time being, nobody's taking the bait. He's getting marked to plenty. So he knows that there's going to be people around, or people nearby at least. Still just waiting. Tossing in some utility and dumping in as best as you can, as now Neptunes will need to move around the other way. He's very exposed from the back, and he'll chew away at the heels of the Thermite, but it's Creators there to take down Neptunes. Goddess eliminates Butters, so the UMP's doing some work. Sonic still with an advantage, and it will grow as a 4v2 goes onto the board, but Goddess playing off on the flank inside of Customs. She gets smoked by Crazy, shut down, and it's again Golfy, who's been heroic, but only one for him, as the two remaining members of Tempo Storm will survive. And a 4-2 scoreline as we swap sides, Tempo Storm onto defense, and Sonics will move on to attack. That was definitely 
a rough round for both teams. You saw the adaptations trying to happen last minute where they tried to get positioning on each other. Tempo Storm did a good job getting map control, but Sonics also did a good job playing back as much as possible, just hiding in good positions. You saw the pulse position. Pulse losing that fight, though, that was really disappointing to see. Neptunes was in a great spot. He had great timing to go, but the ump is so weak. He definitely did not hit enough shots in time to be able to make the kill. Just their positioning did not work out, but it was really the trades from Tempo Storm, keeping pace with every single kill that Sonics was able to get, finally coming down to that position where Tempo Storm was able to get just the final kill from Dream. It was a tough, tough, close one. But the fact yeah, that Tempo Storm were able to win on, you know, the, the, the a secondary site for Sonics, the one that they'd won before, shows Tempo Storm are continuing to adapt. And I'm a little worried here for Sonics being able to take this map. Now, of course, this is the best of three. So they could obviously have this go the full three maps if Sonics are able to win theirs as well. But looking like Tempo, probably going to take this one. We'll see how the attacks go here for uh, Sonics. Maybe they'll have a little bit, you know, better idea what to do. They're going to be bringing out something a little different with the Jack or the Ash. A little bit more aggression as well as tracking down the players a little bit better. Because they're not going to have the new Mozzie combo, but they are going to have the, the Mozzie itself at least. Ten seconds left. Well, we'll see how they're going to set this up. They are playing the Dock as well, but the Vigil room should be really interesting combined with that Mozzie, I imagine, if Creators plays good positions. Now, there's not. this is a two-floor map. There's not as many spots to hide, though. I was just about to say that. I think there's a very credible argument that you can make that Vigil is not the best choice for a map like Border unless there is a very dedicated strategy set up for Tempo Storm. This is sneaky, so... You've got your bullet punch holes and say goodnight. Oh. I believe they call that a GNNT for the kids at home, and he didn't even see it coming. Dream lying prone, excellent drone work from Goddess, and even Ooh. though they lose the drone of Slevin, it doesn't matter. That's a beautiful shot. Nice try. See you next round, Dream. <laughs> He's going to be dreaming all right. He's going to be dreaming of a round. He survives a little bit longer. But the capture of the Mozzie on the drone is definitely going to help uh, Creators, though, taking a lot of damage. He's going to have to flee and, well, get finished off by Gonfi. So not a great start for Tempo Storm. Butter's going to have to make really good use of that drone to make up for the two losses. They do have a smoke to be able to try and push things back if it comes down to that. But he might end up getting in a fight pretty early if Butters and Filthy can't hold inside CCTV here. Butters under a lot of pressure, and he'll be temporarily flashed out. That's a shot from Crazy, if I've ever seen one. And look at the smile on his face. Just a single bullet is all it takes. One tap from the SMG-11. Still Tempo Storm trailing for the time being. Monitors being the biggest focus for Sonics, as Butters will just try to live for as long as he can. Slevin inside of the site, but it's Crazy yet again, and Butters has rotated out. He's playing those same angles that we had seen very similarly from the Sonics. It's going to give him a lot of opportunity to maneuver, and he's also got Filthy there as an added insurance plan if required. So the Sonics will go back onto drone work with just over a minute to go to try and feel out where the remaining members of Tempo are. It's been crazy almost single-handedly shutting them down, and now two drones as well for Tempo Storm. So the information game, which is already favoring the defenders from this lineup, will only continue to grow. Difficult part, though, is Butters isn't in a great position to be able to be on drones. He could be pressured very easily in CCTV, but the fact that they've been able to reduce the numbers of Sonics gives him some flexibility. I just can't imagine he's going to have a lot of time to set those drones up in great positions if they can't start to knock down some more members of the Sonics. But super rotating here for potentially setting up an archive push, or at least a, a pinch from that side, as uh, they could see a push from the archives at the same time. Spotted on one of the remaining drones for the Sonics was the remaining members of Tempo Storm, and one of which had dropped, heading on back up through metal detectors. Butter stunned for the time being, and it's a good spread from Tempo, as you've got three members of the team looking in all different directions. 20 seconds left. Exothermic Charge will blow open a wall in towards Archives. So B Bomb Site is now prime for the taking if you are the Sonics. But where are you going to go? Well, Smoke's going to go in. Filthy's there to take out Gomfi. Shut down by Goddess as now Butters rushes on in. And it's a 2v2. Goddess with another. So it's all on Butters' shoulders. But one second left. Goddess will need to play it. Gets shut down instead by Super. And the Sonics will take their very first attacking round. Round number seven and the gap will close just a tiny bit yet again. 
Well, we're definitely seeing very attacker-dominated rounds here, and some of that comes down to, like you said, the limitations on the number of bomb sites. When you've got two primary bomb sites that everyone's going to be playing, everyone knows how to attack them for the most part. And a site like Armory Lockers, as we saw from Tempo Storm, has two great options to attack it from the front or from the back. You know, from the archives locker site, or, I mean, the the lockers uh, armory site, or from the archives office site. Because you can attack it two different ways, and CCTV becomes a little bit of a pivot point because it has doorways kind of leading to both. That offers a lot of opportunities for the attackers the defenders can't necessarily do a lot and you you really can only afford one roamer downstairs because that if your roamer downstairs isn't super effective that can really kind of hinder your defense defenders protect your speaking of hindering defense by attackers. attackers bringing out capital this time something that will be uh, fantastic for covering that half wall as well as being able to smoke out and cut off rotates from the lockers as well if they go for a rush plant in there something very very useful in this attack, if they can pull it off. And they did it as a six pick as well. So Temple Storm might not be anticipating that. And of course, Jaeger ADSs don't catch those arrows. So they, there's not really much they could do about it other than try and get picks on him while he's pushing. But if they can clear people out first, or at least somewhat secure the angles, say a sandwich pinch, for example, on the uh, sandwich window of lockers, it's very easy for Capital to do his job and set that plant up. Five seconds left. I like the Capitao pick, though. He's a very heavily banned operator by every single team and actually is one of the most banned operators by Tempo Storm, likely because they just won't. Well, they don't want to play against him because he doesn't really have any counters, at least until Wamai is available. Speaking of, the uh, new season coming out, what was it, a week ago? Two weeks ago or so? Yeah. Not too long. Well, Mai and Kali now available, I believe, for everybody to use. Obviously not in Pro League yet. We no, no, don't we have don't, have we don't even have Amaru and Goya. No, no, but that, soon, soon TM, right? <laughs> Eventually. Soon TM. That would have been interesting to see yeah. Goyo. I, what is this? It's, it is a drone this malfunction is, about to get mozzied. This is, all right, well. What I was going to say was, uh, it would be interesting to see how Goyo would be played out. I mean, you've heard a lot oh, of yeah. things from different teams as to his power or his ability and, and how he's going to fit into a composition, so... Especially on this map, I think it would be very strong. We have to uh, we have to wait and see. His pests are doing a great job denying yeah. the drones, though. This is excellent, and this is something that we didn't get to see firsthand from when the Sonics were on defense, how they were doing the same thing. Now, the Sonics on their very first attack last round, they lost two drones that we saw. Could have possibly been a third, for all we know. Slebin inching on in towards Monitors. He'll find the very first kill and crack things open by eliminating Filthy, and that's Monitors wrestled away, but Butters picks up two. He swings on Neptunes and Goddess out of the window. Down below, Diffuser down, dropped and helpless as your Thermite and your Capitao are gone. For the Sonics, that is a crushing blow. That's really going to make an attack setup just difficult. I, I have a feeling we'll see a bit more fragging out. We could see Sonics just kind of pushing in because they can put this, the wall be left soft there for Gonfi to open. That's actually going to backfire. Now that they killed the, the Thermite, it doesn't do as much for them. So we'll see if that was a mistake or not, but they are playing the ACOG dock on it to be able to fight it. So there is definitely a reason why that was left soft. It's just down to Dream to capitalize on that properly because you've also got the ACOG of, uh, you know, the, the ACOG twins there of Rook as well as you mentioned earlier. So that will definitely play into at least fighting back long distance, but they need to know where they're coming from and maybe they can capture a drone to help with that. Sonics have to go back to the drawing board as I don't think they expected those two valuable pieces of utility to go off. And like you said, I know that they left the wall soft, but you got to imagine that that wasn't a mistake or a yeah. short, uh, you know, it was a, an oversight rather from Tempo Storm. So this is a very deliberate. Super takes out Butters. I don't know if the Mozzie was aware of the Jackal's position, but I mean, if there's somebody who's going to track you, well, it's probably the Spanish operator. So Super will now head for the hills as he's only got 30 seconds to join the execute for the rest of his team. And whether it'll be an armory take or not, we'll see. That's another as it's Slevin taking down Crazy. Just waiting for the action to unfold. Super peeks on in. The smoke will go off. Nothing for the ACOG and Dream in a 1v2. The smoke cutting off his line of sight. He'll get flashed out. Second one will hit and he'll wait. Completely blinded, he'll stim himself up. The Sophia will go down below. Slevin with minimal HP will guard over top of the diffuser inside of Fountain. Dream is flying blind here, so it's just gonna be instinctive shot. But he'll give his position away. He's gonna to have to tussle, but turns his back, not assuming the Ash to be sitting in the corner. And we got ourselves a ball game. 4-4, four, four. both teams tied up. Well, I, I gotta wonder now. Are we going to see Tempo Storm repeat the exact same failures of the Sonics in losing archives three times before they can win it? I mean, at this point, they're going to do the exact same thing Sonics did, which is finally go down to vents. 
it's, this is definitely going to be a tough situation to be in because this is their map pick. They had advantage. They were doing so well at the beginning, but now they're falling to just a lot of these easy picks from Sonics. They're just getting caught off guard. I mean, maybe some of that's due to, we were talking about how small this map is. That means lack of mobility, just lack of ability to rotate around to a lot of different positions to be able to get some kind of advantage. And we're seeing map control crumble quickly for both teams. Although to be fair, Tempelstrom had a pretty good position that last round, bringing it down to the last three players of Sonics to clutch that out. But they also gave Sonics a lot of time to play with in terms of being able to rotate their positions around. And then losing the smoke gave them no ability to really remotely deny a plant down in sight. And they just lost their coverage. I, I did like the, the pick that we saw from the Rook onto the uh, sandwich window. That was a great play there. And that definitely helped a little bit in the attempt. But just lack of good coverage all around. On the little, I mean, the site's not very big. You just have two main rooms to cover. But the fact that they weren't able to adequately cover them, the fact that they got traded, good use of the smoke as well, though, in helping uh, stop the Rook from being able to anticipate that. We'll see how it goes this round with the Capital again. But now the Nomad, as I said, usually banned by both these teams, is now going to be in play here from Super. That's going to cut off some of those rotates and further contain Tempo Storm. I do wonder if we'll see some of them play uh, a bit more spread out or if they're going to focus mostly on just Armory Locker's Archives area above the site and then a few players down in Ventilation. They are setting up some holes in the floor to be able to work their way up. They don't have a ton of C4. I can imagine the Mute and possibly the Bandit. But it's not time to work with. They're not playing with the Pulse like we saw from Neptunes either. To be able to help with those C4s, they're going to have to rely a little bit on Intel and Luck. It's a Passport entry now over towards the custom side of things. As just exactly is what happened when Tempo Storm was on attack. We see the inverse happening now with them on defense and the Sonics on attack, right? That's yeah. But there's not as much of a customs hold from Tempo Storm. This is probably going to be a far more routine workshop hold where you look to keep control of Armory above, Archives, maybe Fountain and Office, and that's all you really need. In fact, four members of Tempo Storm are currently sitting seated above. I don't know why they sent out that C4 instead of just shooting away at it with a shotgun, whether they wanted to give their position away, I'm not sure. But it's an execute early, realizing there's nobody inside of sight. Goddess is getting the plant down, and Neptunes will need to cover. He'll take out Butters. One body will drop as another goes down, too. Coffee eliminates Crazy. It's an absolute brawl with the Diffuser going down in a 2v3 in a post plant with the Sonics just narrowly Defenders ahead. The diffuser. Waiting to see if they can retake it all. Dream is inches away from the Diffuser. Super rushes on out, takes down the castle. Dream is there, eliminates Gonfi. SMG 11 in hand, he's got two bullets. You're gonna have to reload at some point. There it goes. Long angles being played by both the Nomad and the Ash. And speaking of, it's the Ash, Slebin. The very first lead for the Sonics will come in round number nine, and it's three rounds in a row. I, I really question. You, you play Vent and you have no one in sight? I mean, good on Sonics to just going, hey, there's no one here. As, uh, as you like to say, it's free real estate at that point. And they just take it, they smoke it, they plant. I mean, to be fair though, they almost didn't get the plant off. You saw you know, the planter died just after plant went down. But once that plant went down, it's a trap at that point for yep. Tempo Storm. It, they did try and rotate back quickly, but not quickly enough. They really should have known that people were really gonna go in there. And you know what I fault some of that too? Lack of intel, no pulse, no Valkyrie, no uh, Maestro available, no echo in play either. They had no intel. When you play like that, you can't have someone off site. That was a huge misplay. And honestly, Sonics deserved that round. Tactical timeout being taken from Tempo Storm. And that's their coach. That actually looks like it's DNA standing behind them. Oh. He's been in the scene for quite a while, and he actually has family ties to another team that's going to be competing in this tournament. Actually, two teams. Yeah. Zisa related to Nyx, and then by extension is also uh, it's nice related to Hot and Cold. Blood it's spread a, around. It's related by marriage, from my understanding, the yeah. Nyx Hot and Cold uh, relationship. And yeah, it's 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 pretty incredible to it's see. Becoming a dynasty. Ball. They're, uh, they're like the Kennedys. <laughs> yeah. They're like the Kennedys of Rainbow Six. It's, uh, it's interesting to see. That, that makes both of us very much boomers for that joke. <laughs> it's Whoops. Very much boomers. So that's okay. Well, we'll deal with it. But no, there's quite actually a lot of staff behind Tempo Storm. If I remember correctly, I think they had two or three support staff with them in terms of coaching and analysts. And obviously, it's a, a benefit that comes from going from being two-faced, an organization with no funding because it's not actually an organization at all, it's just your team name, to going on over to a pretty large esports org and the newest one to enter into our scene. So, 
And getting Butters off the couch as well, which is pretty nice. That's a very heartwarming story. Absolutely. I, I suspect that should Tempo Storm prevail, we will likely hear about it. So, regardless. Yeah. First lead for the Sonics on a map that neither of these teams particularly play. 12 bans for the Sonics on border, 14 bans for Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm's uh, record is 0-0-2. Now, there is one thing to note about these kind of LAN events, is that a lot of teams will specifically practice for them and pull new strats out. Yeah. There is a meme that filters through the community called Saving Strats, where teams don't actually try until they get to LAN events. In this particular case, I don't know if <laughs> I would say that it was saving. No, I would say in this particular instance. Both these teams definitely were looking for a map that they were struggling on, and that they were both struggling on, really, so that they could capitalize on the weakness of the other team. But right now, Sonics are the ones capitalizing the most. They're actually a point ahead after such a rough start because Tempo Storm couldn't win their Vents defense the way that Sonics did. They are at least making one adjustment now that they're bringing the Echo for the Archives, and maybe that will help out. It did help a little bit for the Sonics, but not a ton. Is a, you know, it only helped them win one round, but they also did lose uh, some of their gunfights with that Echo. The, the difficult part, though, is where you play the Echo, because there's limited positions where you can sit safely and be on that drone. We do see them is setting that up, Dream trying to get some good positions. Again, going with a soft wall and an ACOG. This time, instead of a dock, it's just going to be that Echo. But I gotta, I gotta wonder, is he just gonna be on his ACOG half the time rather than his drones and just set those up and hope his teammates are gonna watch them? Or is he gonna be active with the yokais? He's definitely not setting them up for roamers. Possibly put Crazy in a spot to sit on the yokais depending on how he's using them. Does he want to do something involving helping a roamer, as you said? Does, do you want to use them as an anchor or to assist an anchor? He's back on his drones right now and moving them around, so he's not just gonna be in that Ooh. single position. Creators have guns down, slab it, and then tosses over a nitro cell. Say goodnight, Super. Two for Creators playing in a very pivotal spot in order to try and wrestle this lead back from the Sonics. Playing inside of offices, he knows he's got control over towards monitors, and Goffy will be slowed down ever so slightly from one of those yokais. Filthy punished by Neptunes and burned alive inside of security. You've got two ACOGs dueling against each other now with Neptunes on repel, watching all the way back towards the Echo. But the Echo very smartly has moved. It's just going to be a smoke, at least for the time being, to obscure the positioning of the Capitao. A lost fight from Butters down below. I don't know what he was going for in that altercation with Gomfi, but he didn't really have much at his disposal. Back to a 3v3 with a minute left. If it wasn't for the play of creators, well, this is a Sonic's lopsided affair, or not a lopsided affair for the Sonics, rather. Lots of soft destruction inside of monitors. They still have some utility heavy operators left on Sonics, though. I don't know if the entry point into the site is being stopped by these pests. We've seen a couple doors and windows that have them on them, but there's one pest unaccounted for that I've seen so far. God is holding the diffuser, nothing surprising there. The Thermite will need to be the one to go in and follow through with the execute. She has Neptunes and Gonfi with her. Stacking up over towards Armory Wall, as you can see the Tempo Storm have maneuvered their troops in order to anticipate an A-Tank. And it's gonna be one Toxic Canister answered with a smoke from the Capitao instantly going off. Dream, if he still has some Yokais, will need to get them into po in proper place, but he's sitting so far back. There is a Yokai still up. Oh, Creators through the smoke and crazy with another as well. Creators, four kills on the round. Impressive play from the Bandit, and we're tied back up. Great read into the smoke play there. He knows the smoke's going out. If there's a smoke going out, there's two places they're going to be planting. Either right next to the wall where he has no angle anyways, or running across to the lockers. He ran into it, missing the first shot, but honestly, the kill he got was the more important one. Dropping the diffuser in place, forcing them to possibly double back to get it, or just straight into gunfights. But yeah, a 4K for him that round. Going from the office's side, rotating all the way around to the other bomb site, picking up two more over there. That was definitely his round, and uh, definitely some good highlights for him there. And you don't always expect that from a bandit. While bandit's a great operator and can definitely frag out, you don't necessarily expect a lot of 4Ks out of him. As a, you know, oftentimes he's picked more for his utility than for his gun, but he still has a great one. He is going to six pick over to the castle from it this time. But they are going to have the lesion in play to help a little bit Defenders with some of that intel, cover some of the angles, and uh, a mute to deny a little bit. And we're going to see the same operator lineup here coming out pretty much from uh, Sonics, except for dropping the Nomad. I mean. They could still get plenty of utility on a Nomad, but the way that Tempo Storm just held on sight and didn't move around a lot really denied it. Plus, the Nomad dying early last Bomb round, I can see why they'd want to go with the Thatcher instead. 
The one good thing for a team that is as inexperienced on land as Tempo Storm are is that both Creators and Dream are living up to their online billing as well. It's yeah. very commonplace to see a team that has extraordinary performance online come to land and get the shakes. A good example of that was the Owen joke that was used by Veli last year. Doodle was not particularly known for going quiet. He comes on into USN and he doesn't perform particularly well, which is why Veli said he was playing with Owen, Owen 7, because he didn't drop a single kill in that map. So for Tempo Storm, they're hanging tough with the Sonics and Dream and Creators are doing what they need to do. If either of them fall off, Ida gets enough to give Sonics the advantage here. Yeah. I mean, we were expecting a lot out of Filthy being the, the heavy fragger of the team, but it's really been, yeah, some of those support flex players that have been actually really flexing their muscle the most. And I think that uh, shows maybe maybe it's a land thing. Maybe Filthy hasn't uh, had uh, you know, the land experience. He's getting a little bit of land shakes. But the fact that some of his teammates, as you talk about, are stepping up, it's a big deal here. But we are tied at the moment. So it really could go either way. Tempo Storm, as I said, this is their map. They need to win it because they're going to be going into a, a little bit of a tougher map on Clubhouse next. Not a great place to be, but you know, it's not it's not an odd map either, so they should know that one pretty well, but you I don't want to start off at a disadvantage like that. Once again, this defense down below of workshop ventilation from Tempo Storm doesn't involve much of a focus on customs. So the Sonics can waltz right in through jail, sit inside a supply room, stare very intently over towards the server rack, just in between the two bombs, and wait for somebody to dare Slevin to take a fight. He's been hitting his shots today, maybe not as well as some of his fellow teammates, but he's been reliable and dependable. Crazy was the one that was in the line of fire, should he peek Slebin, but... Well, a couple blasts from the SMG-11, and he's managed to shake off anybody from SQ that was looking to push him. Slebin will go right back on, now onto drones, rather, as from the back, the Sonics will survey B-Bomb and see if there's anybody playing inside of it. It's completely clear. And I think learning from how quick of a push the Sonics pulled off on this site last time, Tempo Storm are not engaged as much onto that second floor. Goobine is going to go off and Crazy still watching the window. There are still some people from Tempo Storm that are playing on that second floor, but not all of them. Goffy creeps on in after sustaining some significantly da heavy damage. Slebin down, finished off. Down goes Crazy on a trade from Super, who's inside a bathroom and has full control with soft walls to boot. So he can open things up if he wants, if he has breaching charges on that Thatcher. The Legion of Filthy twists and turns, cannot hit any targets outside. And the Sonics are split apart. Dream takes out Goddess. And Tempo Storm will now need to answer back to the push that's happening from the Sonics with 30 seconds to go. Gonfi's there, traded off again by Creators. Down goes Creators to Super. So all of the dominoes are falling. And Match Point is on the line here. Butters sees one. He gets pinged from the back. What a play from Butters. And he's fired up. Match Point for Tempo Storm. That was definitely a much better round. You had Crazy playing downstairs this time, not leaving it open. He was watching both sites. He was near the B site. He managed to get a pick from there as well, just holding them off as long as possible. But it's the fact that once he died, they started rotating down. You saw, for example, uh, the Legion rotate down, try and make a play. Didn't quite get the kill, but he softened them up. Then the Jaeger rotates down as well, starts to soften them up even more. It's the fact that they started to push down. They had a great hold from upstairs, but a much, much better pacing from Temple storm that time and also having the player downstairs really slowed them down. I, I liked the way that Sonic surveyed the site as you mentioned the B site looking for an opportunity. You had Neptunes checking the corners even from on top of the bus. Just trying to find out can we push the site. We have smoke from Capital. We have fire so we can cut off the rotate through the hole. Can we make this play? But as soon as they started to make towards Defenders those plays, Crazy shut it down and it just fell apart from there. But overall, great round and that is going to put Temple Storm back in the lead Finally winning events defense here, but they have a third bomb site, unlike Sonics. And this is going to be the toughest thing. They're going to have to put this match away without re requiring overtime or relying on overtime, rather. And they're going to need to do that on a less enviable bomb site. Are you going to go to customs? Are you going to go to bathrooms? Tellers, that's the thought process that a lot of people have, because depending on what region you play in and depending on the way that your team plays, you might want to go towards bathroom tellers and play very aggressively up top. But with the, you know that the Sonics on attack are very good at reading into a situation and seeing that you don't have coverage on site and taking advantage of that. You don't want to risk it on a bomb site like bathroom tellers where if things go wrong, 
they go wrong real fast. And it's, lose it. it's extremely hard for you to retake. So Customs is the call for Tempo Storm. I think that's right, given the way that we know that the Sonics play. The Sonics have not really had to wrestle with Customs at all. They've been granted free access into jail, and it sounds like if that exothermic charge goes off, that once again, it will be free access too. Well, they are playing two people downstairs. There's a little bit of a difference from the Vents defense, but like you said, top floor control is important, and reading into any weaknesses will help here, but Butters managed to get down, but he's Doc. He can get himself back up if they cannot finish the kill, and he does. He gets back up, heals himself up. He's gonna hold that top floor as long as he can, and a Doc, of course, is a good person to do that, and you see exactly why. Just self-sustaining as long as possible. Castle Barricade's also doing a job cutting off some rotates here. Dream as well, playing in between on the, the metal stairs, trying to decide, do I hold up or down? Crazy down as well. I like this split. I like this setup by Tempo Storm. But like you said, Sonics are good to reading, uh, reading into where weaknesses might be. But they often take a little while to do so, and that gives Tempo Storm time to adjust as well. And that's exactly what Dream's doing. He's rotating off to try and hold them back. But now that leaves Cre Crazy all alone, the top floor control gonna have to work in the favor of Tempo Storm. They might have to open up some holes in the floor to be able to help cover his doorways. By my note taking, the team that has got the opening pick has won the round 100% of the time in this matchup. That is a stat for sure. So, obviously, you don't want to find yourself down one early, but especially not in this instance. That trend line would have to break for either team if they lose the opening pick and then still want to go on to win. Overtime does await us, should this not fall in favor of Tempo Storm. I'm also kind of surprised with how much is open here, and there's the opening pick in favor of the Sonics. Will we see 12 rounds in a row? Well, it sure looks like it. Butters runs out. He's got the only kill for his team, but he's going to be cut down as he heads back in. It's a 1v4. That was a snap your fingers and everybody's dead kind of moment. On the ground is the Zofia, and the stat line holds. You get the opening pick, you win the round. We don't even need to play out the remainder of it. We'll go to overtime between these two teams. Definitely a great round by Sonics. Again, reading into the weakness of downstairs. The fact that they forced uh, the Mozzie upstairs, trapped Crazy downstairs. I mean, Crazy does a great job trying to hold off as long as he can. When you've got the entire team pressuring on you and able to set up for a plan like that, it's a tough spot to be in. So these split defenses are absolutely Tempo Storm's weaknesses. That's where they're really struggling, but they also had struggled on Armory Lockers. So we'll see if they can manage to pull it off. Both teams have only succeeded on it once. So you talk about breaking trend lines. This is where Tempo Storm need to do exactly that. We're in the overtime now. Both teams showing they can play this map. Who will be the breakaway? And we often do see breakaways in these overtimes where the trends do tend to reverse. We absolutely could see Tempo Storm just do fantastic on this and all of a sudden attacks start to struggle Defenders on the overtime. Your bombs absolutely happens. By attackers. I was going to say, a very deep stat line with the only person so far that seems to be trailing the rest of his team being filthy. Everybody else, uh, I think, performing quite admirably and as expected. Very evenly matched these two teams are. Now, you wanted to talk about trend lines here in overtime, and I think it's important to focus on that, but Clubhouse is our next map. Yeah. We will play it no matter what. Coastline is the question mark whether we'll need it. With how close the Sonics have been to Tempo Storm on this map, Given the fact that Tempo Storm doesn't play this map very much, what's your gut shot on Clubhouse? I think we see all their maps. You think so? If, if Tempo Storm takes this ball. If Tempo Storm loses, I think there's a strong possibility that Sonics could run away with it. A nice stat there about the ACOGs. So yeah, definitely a lot of ACOG heavy defense here. Uh, in this round, it will only be the Echo. But definitely a lot of trying to play angles. Creators, though, is a oh. god on that MP7. It's <laughs> Smiles, leans over, fist bumps. Yeah, definitely a good start for creators. Maybe another 4K for him. He's still playing the same position inside offices. A great position for them. I don't think they're going to set up for the C4 the same time. I, I think that was a pre-fire on the... It, it exactly was because the, the body, the carcass <laughs> the of Gomfi is on the ground, which would lead me to believe that he was on rappel, probably shooting down the door, and you can see that a couple of the walls have been picked apart as well. So... Great shot from creators and something that you're going to expect from players at this level. Doesn't matter how new you are to Pro League or to USN or to Challenger League or to Competitive League or whichever <laughs> national league you're playing in. When you're playing at this top competitive level and you're playing up against these teams of this caliber, you're going to expect people to be able to hit those shots. Yeah. Creators is lined up for a possible second one now on the sled and whether the Ash can dance around it. 
This is definitely getting tense for these guys because they're just looking for opening picks here, and Songs are at the disadvantage of that. The Pestron's doing a little bit of work at denying that intel as well. And it's a showdown between those two players, right? You gotta keep in mind that there's still, what, seven more people on the map that are doing their job as required. Neptune's creeping up metal right now. I don't know if he gets spotted. Oh. Nova Crazy's there to have the back of his teammate. And down goes Slebin 2, and it's a landslide at the moment for Tempo Storm. The kill holes on the ground from Butters. Silencing Super and got us in a 1v5. Could we see a flawless round here? Yes, we will. Wow. Back to match point for Tempo Storm. They get it back just as quickly as they lost it. Like I said, the trend line switching. You don't expect a, a flawless round from the Archives defense after all the Archives defenses we saw so far, but it seems Temple Storm have figured it out, and a lot of that is on the back of Creators. He is doing a fantastic job on that bandit play, just seeming like the Sonics just falling into line for him. But we'll see how the vents defenses go down here. Again, this was a good site for Sonics. They did manage to win it one time out of the two times they played it. They definitely have the possibility to win it here. I, I really could see an 8-7 scoreline at the end of this because the back and forth is very real here. And uh, with this overtime, both teams have seen all the defenses available, all the strats that they've been using so far. If nothing switches up, it's just down who can execute better yeah. or just anticipate the other players better. That game sense. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, we hear the thematic music in the background, which leads me to believe that it's a Sonic's timeout. If there's something that popped up on the monitor, I must have missed it. But I would... But it is. It is a timeout from the Sonics. And I mean, hey, both teams get one timeout per map. Yeah. You know, you saw it get taken to about, what, seven, eight rounds ago for Tempo Storm after they were almost in free fall with the three rounds in a row from the Sonics, and then they marched back. Now the Sonics need to take it, and I mean, there's not a moment too soon. There's only one more round left after this round you're about to play. You're kind of running out of runway at that point. It's a good test for their new coach to see whether or not he can kind of bring this back for them because, you know, that's a part of what you're doing in a timeout is getting finally getting a chance to speak to the coach because the coach has the perspective of all five players. Is, is he on them. as a coach or an analyst? You know, I think he's doing a bit of both roles. So I, I find that I if there's only one, one, they usually do both, right? I'll, I'll just call him coach. Coach. Because he's definitely acting in that role yeah. right now. Well, we'll see how this vent defense goes here because, Defenders, protect your you know, if Sonic's, though, if they lose this map, it's not as big a deal since it wasn't their map pick. But you obviously, you don't want to have to go to all three to win it if you can help it because you want to save some of your strength and energy for future matches. You also don't want to give away too much. And the less rounds you play, the less you give away to future opponents as well. Yeah, we'll see, of course, the, the castle strats come out here again. But Neptune's back on that pulse is one for them to watch out for because he was very effective the last couple times. So they're really going to have to make sure they don't fall prey to him. So they got to know, okay, we know he's playing that pulse. We managed to kind of track him down and push him out a little bit last time with the drones. We've got to do something similar again. We've got to know where Neptune's is at so we know where we can play safely or trick him into burning that C4 early so he's a little bit less effective as a pulse. I really like that uh, five screen setup that we have. Yeah, it's an awful lot. Yeah, it's it's really nice to be able to give that view. Casting on LAN is always such a treat because we have access to things that we don't have when we're online. So many more tools, so many more tools whether they be picture-in-picture, picture, whether they just be simply top-down, whether it be multi-view, all of it's great, so... We've still got a, a nice long day of matches, then two more days after that, so there'll be plenty of time for us to uh, oogle over top of the uh, all the things that are added to it. So there the castle barricade goes, and Crazy springs on in through Passport. He knows that he's got one inside of the bathroom, but he's not able to line up the shots that are required, but that could have been very quick and very early for Sonics to go down one. And keep in mind, still with that 13th round, every single opening kill has been a victory in the sense, because the team that has gotten it has won the actual round. So, don't die early. That's all they need to say. Stop feeding, yeah. I think would be the correct thing to say. Dream under fire from a UMP. He hears the sounds of the gun very distinct. He primes a grenade. As you can see, the cardiac sensor going. It'll bounce around the corner and say goodbye to Neptunes as we get a good look of the Toby eye tracker right now. First kill going out for Tempo Storm, but Super will answer back. There goes a C4 as he takes some damage, chewed through the wall as he escapes. A little worse for wear, but he's wearing it well, I think you could say. Yeah, definitely. Good start here, though. You said the opening kill matters. To get the kill on the to Neptunes doesn't seem to be mattering because Sledgen is being able to bring that back. And they've lost now the Sophia and the Sledge. A lot of utility off the board there. 
They still have at least the Ash, but one Breach and Charge already used on the Castle Barricade leaves just one in the pocket. They've got some EMPs left to play with as well, and they don't have to worry about a Mozzie this round, so droning really needs to come out here from Tempo Storm. It's a tough shot for Filthy to make, as he'll have to just go through the small little bars where Slevin is playing. He's got Gonfi right next to him. Oh, Gonfi looks over to the corner and gets the kill, and the lead for the Sonics will continue to grow at 2v4 as Filthy fell from above. Crazy and Creators. Creators rocking the hard breach now as the two FBI operators will work in tandem with one another. 40 seconds to go. They've got the match on the line. We could need all 15 rounds. Still, opening kill went to Tempo Storm, and that might not be worth much as Goddess lines one up, takes out Creators, and it's crazy, and she'll get two. Who cares who gets the opening pick? We'll need the ultimate match point of ultimate match point. 15 rounds to start off map number one in a hell of a way to get USN underway. You know, this is about as evenly matched as we thought it would be, I think. Just, it, you were anticipating this to be very close. As we were saying, these two teams just passed each other in terms of promotion or demotion. So you know they're about on even footing here. Now, they didn't, uh, Tempo Storm didn't beat Sonics in relegation, they beat Rogue. So, we, don't, we didn't necessarily know how these two were going to match up against each other, but I think we're definitely seeing it now, especially since they're playing on a map that both of them are generally weak on. So it's a very interesting test of adaptation. And going the full 15 rounds, I think, is a great way to see that. And we will see a ventilation workshop again here as a, they did win their archives defense. So the adaptations continue. Not a ton of operator choices. They are going to try the Nomad again, try and cut off some of those rotates. Now, I think that could be even more important here on an attacker because we know that they're a little bit slow to rotate, Defenders, right? So when you have a team that is trying to slow for retake, rotate, if you can get some of those air jabs in those rotate positions, like you could even get them just below a hatch where they might drop and all of a sudden they get air jab as soon as they hit the ground. That's really going to give you advantage on taking this. They might need to play two people on site to be able to accurately hold this. Yeah. The first time that we saw Tempo Storm go to this site on defense, they got bull rushed by Sonic. So he sprang on in and got a plant down in the default plant spot in Workshop, just under that old Workshop light that used to obscure so much vision through the doorway, if you'll recall. But then the second time around, they were able to fix it and right the ship. So 50-50 on the site. You're basically flicking a coin, or flipping a coin, I guess you could say. I guess you technically flick it, too, right? Sure, yeah, with your thumb. You flick it with your thumb to get it to flip, I guess, technically. That was wrong. Anyway, you're basically flipping the coin, and you're gambling the whole map on this one round. I do agree with you. I think if the Sonics come out victorious, then it's going to be a very, very steep hill to climb for Tempo Storm, especially on the Sonics map. Now... This will be broken down by the analysts, but Clubhouse has been banned four times from Tempo Storm. They have a decent record on it of 2-1-2. Two, two. They have a worse record on Border, which is the map they picked, than they do on Clubhouse. So that's just something to keep in mind. Nice angle there, taking care of that very early. They have a plenty of utility for the Castle Barricades between the Zofia and the Ash, so it shouldn't be difficult to clear those out, but this is a nice... Uh, push here as well, trying to take control of customs early. Again, just take control of the map uh, on the bottom floor as much as possible to cut off those rotates before they start to come down, because you know they're, they're going for that late play down. Just surround crazy early. A bomb has been located. It's the same entry pattern from the Sonics every single time. Get on in towards Passport, whether you want to take jail or not, and then just kind of corral yourself, or corral the defenders, rather, and rally the troops inside a Passport. Goddess does her job with both exothermic charges, punching a hole inside a jail, and then using the other on uh, what sounded like it was the, the bathroom wall, and then she got out of there as quickly as she could. Super is rotating around a lot. I, I don't know if he's setting up those air jabs or not, but he really needs to be doing so, especially as Gompy gets down here. Oh. Could get himself back up, though. Not the bathroom wall. It was the wall at the bottom of the main stairs. Filthy takes out Gompy, and three rounds in a row opening kill is going to go to Tempo Storm. It comes with a minute to go, so with Gompy removed, that's some very valuable utility and some possible lockdown on either defenders that are roaming or playing on site. A lot will fall onto the shoulders of Slebin and Neptunes now to carry the fragging weight. Slebin will get one onto Filthy. Firing away is crazy. We'll just simply wait and persevere inside of the bathroom to ride out the oncoming storm. Down goes one smoke, but Super has him on drone, knowing that Crazy's playing inside of the bathroom. The jig may be up. Still heavy control inside of Passport. 
taking their time. The Sonics have not droned out that second floor at all, which is where Butters is playing. This is a very unidirectional push from the Sonics with the entire first map on the line. We'll see exactly where Super is looking to try and find if there's anybody that's going to be playing on flank. We can see from the silhouettes there's nobody there. Neptune's guns down Butters from above. So Neptune's was dispatched onto that second floor. Dream is up there. Slepin finds Creators. And just like that, Sonics have a huge advantage. Crazy and Dream get two. It's a 2v2. And we're going to be taking the final 10 seconds. So hold on to your seats. At least for the time being, Dream will need to get back down to the site. Where's the Diffuser? In the hands of Goddess, she'll attempt the plant. Crazy will need to swarm on in at some point. Dream sees one, so it's all on the shoulders of Crazy, who gets knocked back by the Nomad air jab. And the Diffuser goes down quite successfully. Crazy does a little bit of damage to Slebin, but not much. This is going to be tough. It sets up a pretty good storyline, but it takes all the way to round 15. And map one, steal it away from them, why don't you? The Sonics will take it from Tempo Storm. Wow. Definitely great there. We're going to test the analyst, though, to break it down, but man, what a match. Absolutely. Take it away, Jump. At the end of the first half, Sonics only had found themselves with two rounds in a victory. At the end, they ended up pulling themselves back and winning down in overtime, and we were talking about...